Hi folks, Rich here. Just a quick uh, update for those who are subscribing or interested and hello and thank you if you are. Let's have a quick peek at the guitars behind me. The Swamp Ash Special ain't going nowhere. The neck on that is a wide thin. It's not my favourite neck in the world, but it's lovely to play. I love the tones on it. It was pretty expensive, or at least to me anyway. 600 quid's a lot of money to me. And I love it. So that stays. The Fender Tele that I've just bought, I'm pretty sure that stays. I'll say pretty sure. I can't get a proper feel for it because it's not set up all that well. It doesn't play very nicely. But for the money I paid and the type of guitar it is, and I like tellies, I think that, that will stay. You just need some love. Obviously, the mighty Mina, she will always stay. Sarah, Jane, my lovely wife, she bought it for me after we've been dating for six months. And Tom, hi Tom, if you're watching, did some magic with it, and it's uh, just a wonderful guitar in its own right. That Chapman ML3 standard is now sold, and I'm never buying a guitar with Jumbo Frets again. Just, just saying, the jumbo frets on that guitar are particularly chunky. Mina's also got jumbos, the stainless steels. Don't really like them. Uh, I've got used to that and she is what she is. The Chapman over there, that's also got stainless steel frets, supposedly jumbo, but they're not as big and round as some of the other ones I've, I've played. That Captain, by the way, that won't go either. I, I like the feel of the neck, the way it plays, the way it sounds. That's a great guitar and didn't cost me a lot. Needs a bit of a setup, but it's, it's good enough. You'll notice, oh, sorry, and here, Whoop, there we are. I've still got the Fender Malibu. Don't play a, a huge amount, but it's nice to have an acoustic for when you want one, so that's not going anywhere. Uh, I've got a, de a decent deal on that as well. So those are they. You'll notice the Silver Sky is already gone. You know what I'm like, hey. Um, yeah, did just the neck really well. I like the colour of it. And I suppose everyone who gets a Strat style guitar that isn't an, an actual Strat, you've got to like what it's, what it's about. Headstock, I don't know really, just with the big grey uh, truss rod cover and the grey buttons. I don't know, the headstock didn't, wasn't very pretty really, uh, but mostly it was the neck, it was just too, too kind of roundy and fat. Uh, I've got little chockies, and as you know, I'm not really into fat necks. The Fender's just a perfect size neck. Uh, the Cap 10's a flatter radius, but that's also nice. Yeah, just chunky, chunky necks just aren't my thing, and that is just a bit excuse me sorry just a bit too chunky so that's gone so uh, that leaves what next I've probably got about 900 pounds now I can spend and uh, God, I maybe spend it all on one guitar I don't know I'm a bit wary of doing that knowing what I'm like because I get bored with things don't I and if I spent 900 pounds on something brand new and I got fed up with it a few months later for whatever reason you lose a lot of money if I spent 900 on a used guitar if I got it right then I'd only lose potentially any fees on it but I don't know I'm a bit wary because there are no guitars that really really jump out at me I must have that um, you know a few of them kind of do that to me but yeah I'm just a bit wary so maybe you know spending less get a couple of guitars get one guitar do something without some pedals I don't know really I'm, I'm not sure the PRS SE Paul Allender has been on my radar for a long time because it's Cradle of Filth's former uh, guitarist I particularly like the purple one the original purple quilt top one hard to find one sold recently for 350 which is cheap there used to be a lot more than that there's a, an EMG version which would be good to have uh, there is one at the moment which I can buy which looks in all right condition it's the crimson red so I really wanted the purple one, but it's a crimson red one and it's got EMGs and it looks in reasonable condition it's about 2010 so quite old Obviously, it's got a glossy neck on the back, but that's just the nature of the beast. But uh, backed inlays, so it might not be the easiest to navigate your way around it. But this guy doesn't want a huge amount for it. I think two seventy, which is cheap, cheap, bit of a drive for me. But I'm sort of tempted by that because it's something that I've always fancied being a cradle of filth fan. Uh, Bat inlays are cool. I've never had AMGs, so that might be a good metal guitar for not a lot of money, even if it doesn't get played a huge amount. I don't know. So that's a maybe, but yeah, that, not sure really. Not sure what to do. I certainly know I'm not going to make any impulse buys uh, at this time, that's for sure. Obviously, I don't have a Strat other than my Jackman Super Strat. Now, I'll get Stratty tones out of the three guitars from my video I did the other day, but I suppose it's still good to have an actual Strat. There are some nice Fender FSRs, something a little bit different, which is a, a consideration. Maybe something a bit older and for a thousand pounds there's the fender 
limited edition mahogany body Olympic white. It's got three gold humbuckers in it and all gold hardware. I nearly bought one when they came out five years ago. They were about 725 or 775. But yeah, that's a huge amount of money, so I don't know. Mm. Uh, lastly, my EQ panel, which didn't seem to work in the end. When I first plugged it in through my signal chain, it was all took it out, plugged it back in and it worked and then it didn't and then it did. Put it in a different place, put it through the fax loop and in the end it just it was nothing was coming out of it. The light was on, no one's home. So I've sent that one back, uh, bought that off an Amazon seller. They've already refunded my money, which is great. And I've ordered another one of the same because I like the pedal. So uh, yeah, that's that. Oh, and lastly, I have all bought a, a Blackstar HT1R head with a Blackstar 4x8 cab. Now, the HT1 Mark II is better, it's a couple of channels and yeah, it's a bit better amp, but I've paid £100 for it. Usually, you know, usually the heads on their own go for a 60, 80 ish, something like that. And the same for the cab. So I've got it, yeah, I, I should have paid about 150 really. So I'm just hoping the guy comes back to me. He's not too far from me, he's about an hour away, and he's got about 1,400 positive feedback on eBay. So I've messaged him a couple of times to say, what about collections? So I'm hoping he doesn't think, well, I'm not going to let that go for 100 pounds, stuff him and refund me, or I don't know, hopefully not. So I've been, I've, I've been gagging to, I don't know, have a head and a cab, <laughs> just just because I've not had one before. So we'll see what that's like when it arrives. If it, uh, if it sounds okay, then I might be tempted to get rid of the, uh, the head and get the Mark II version of it, which will cost a bit more, but if the cab sounds all right. Four by eight Celestian speakers. Anyway, that's it, bye for now.